Uh, today I have a very strange story I found in a book I read, and the book is Strange World by Frank Edwards, and it's true events so fantastic and amazing as to baffle the most brilliant scientific minds. And this was first published in 1964, which is about one year after uh, the story I'm about to tell you takes place. Um, but this one particular story stood out to me, and some of the others that stood out to me, I went and looked up uh, more information on, and they turned out to later uh, kind of be explained. But this particular story, to this day, still has no explanation and was correctly reported in this book. So I'm going to read to you the version that's in this book, because uh, it really pulls all the pieces together very well, but, but then I found even more strange information to do with this particular story. Number one being that as I was reading this story, I thought for sure, for sure, it had to be um, the inspiration for the movie Carnival of Souls, which is a horror movie from the 60s, which I really recommend. It's kind of a cult classic, I guess you could say, um, if you haven't seen it. And you like older horror movies, you should definitely check it out. It's really good. Um, but I thought for sure that this, this story of Thomas Meehan had to be the inspiration for that story. So I went uh, on Wikipedia and looked up what the inspiration for that, that movie was. And it said um, Occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge, which I can see. But it didn't mention anything about Thomas Meehan. So then I noticed... That Carnival of Souls was released on September 26, 1962. The Thomas Meehan story happened on February 1st, 1963, almost four months later. And his story, it's so crazy, all the parallels between it and Carnival of Souls. Um, it's almost like truth is stranger than fiction, or truth is as strange as fiction. So here's the story of the disappearance of Thomas P. Meehan. The Mystery of Mr. Meehan 38-year-old Thomas Meehan was a handsome man, a very successful attorney who enjoyed a profitable private practice and who held a counsel's post with the California Employment Department. His office was in his hometown of Concord, and on February 1, 1963, Mr. Meehan concluded a week of hearings on employment cases in Eureka and headed for home. He left Eureka at about 2 p.m. after he complained that he believed he was taking the flu. At a bar in Myers Flat, he stopped for a drink, and while there, he phoned his wife and told her that he felt ill and would be getting home late. Mrs. Meehan advised him to stop at a motel instead of trying to drive when he did not feel well. At about 4.45 that afternoon, Thomas Meehan checked into the Forty Winks Motel at Redway, which is a couple of miles north of Garbersville. After making arrangements to spend the night there, he drove into Garbersville and went to the hospital seeking a doctor. He told the nurse, I feel like I'm dead. While the nurse was making some preliminary checks on him, and before a doctor had examined him, Mr. Meehan vanished from the hospital. Time, about 6.45 p.m. Mr. and Mrs. Marvin Martin of Myers Flat reported to the State Highway Patrol at 7 p.m. They had just seen the taillights of a speeding car on Highway 101 vanish, apparently into the rolling waters of the Eel River. The state police immediately dispatched a car to the scene. At 8 p.m., Tom Meehan walked into the Forty Winks Motel again. He said to Chip Noonmaker, the owner, Do I look like I'm dead? I feel like I died and the whole world has died with me. Noonmaker noticed that Meehan's shoes and the lower three or four inches of his pant legs were wet and muddy. Meehan went on to his room. A bellboy went to Meehan's room at 9.30 p.m. to tell him that a call had been placed to his wife in Concord and could not be completed because a storm had disrupted the service. The bellboy noticed that Mian had changed into a black suit and white shirt. At 10.45 p.m., Mian's car was found in the Eel River. It was submerged up to the tail lamps, which were still burning. There was blood on the top of the car, and a trail of bloody footprints led up the bank and toward the highway, where they abruptly stopped. There was nobody in the submerged car. Police said it had gone into the river at high speed. 
Mian was not at the Forty Winks Motel, although his clothes were there, and his suitcase. The wet suit and shoes were not wet and showed no signs of having been mud smeared before. Meehan had vanished. He had disappeared on the night of February 1st, and he was not seen again until February 20th, when his body was found 16 miles down the river from the spot where his car had plunged into the river. An autopsy showed that he had been drowned. His head had been gashed, but the wound was superficial. Meehan had evidently survived the plunge into the river, only to drown later. The case presented the authorities with a puzzle which was not solved. If Meehan got up the bank to safety and then stumbled back into the river, how did the owner and the bellboy at the motel see him later? How could he have gone back to the hotel and cleaned up, only to drown later in the river miles away? The state police did not doubt the identification of Meehan at the motel, for both the manager and bellboy saw and talked to him. But how Meehan could be in two places at the same time, dead in the river and alive at the motel, has not yet been determined. So if that wasn't strange enough for you, it gets a little stranger. <laughs> at the time this was all happening to Thomas Meehan, um, a movie was out in theaters across country called Carnival of Souls. Um, which strangely has many, many parallels to the Thomas Meehan case. Carnival of Souls was first released in September of 62, and this happened to Thomas Meehan February 1st, 63, but it was still playing all over the country at the time. The movie was filmed from September to October of 1961, so there's absolutely no way... Uh, Thomas Meehan's story could have affected the story of that script in any way. Carnival of Souls is basically a ghost story about a young woman who is in a car that crashes into a river uh, and she drowns, but somehow she also goes on with her life <laughs> until the point when her body is found in the river. So in both stories, a car crashes into a river and then the person in the car crash who is actually dead in the river, is later seen and um, conversed with after they're dead. Uh, Thomas Meehan, the people at the motel, the hospital, a bar, all have conversations with him. And in fact, I read one newspaper article. Uh, it wasn't mentioned in the book, but there was a worker at the motel who had quite a lengthy conversation with him outside of his room, and he said, Meehan just seemed a little tired, um, but he noticed nothing particularly strange about him. So both Thomas Meehan and the girl in Carnival of Souls both feel dead. Now the girl in Carnival of Souls didn't outright say she feels dead, uh, but she felt like something wasn't right with her. And there would be times when she'd kind of blink out of reality, and she could see everything around her, but she couldn't hear anything, and the people around her couldn't hear her or see her, so it was like she was a ghost. Did that happen to Thomas Meehan? We don't know, he's not here to tell us. <laughs> Both um, the Meehan case and in Carnival of Souls, there's a trail of footprints that just suddenly stop, and from that point on, neither person are ever seen again. Both stories involve a road trip and driving, and also staying at a motel slash boarding house uh, with suitcases. And in both stories, a doctor is involved. Thomas Meehan goes to the hospital and complains of feeling dead. The girl in Carnival of Souls is having an episode on the street and she runs into a doctor and she begins to explain to him and he takes her back to his offices, which happen to be just down the street. She tells him a little more and then she just decides to leave, much like Thomas Meehan just decided to walk out of the hospital. And in both stories, after some time passes, days, couple weeks, the bodies are found in the river and leaving us with many questions. <laughs> an interesting thing I read in an old newspaper at the time Carnival of Souls was released was that the director, his next project involved a script uh, that dealt with ESP and it's almost like his first script, Carnival of Souls, was kind of a 
premonition of what was going to happen to Thomas Meehan. So if Thomas Meehan's story wasn't strange enough, it gets a little, a little stranger. Um, his wife, in 1963, decided to press charges against his co-worker, uh, the hospital, the doctor, and a number of other people. And she said that the co-worker, Paul Herbert, uh, gave Thomas Meehan LSD, which caused all of this. So Paul Herbert was a court reporter and he had gone to Eureka with Thomas Meehan for the hearings that they were taking part in. Uh, and he had been concerned about Thomas Meehan. He thought um, because he was ill with the flu that he shouldn't go on alone, but Thomas Meehan wanted to. Uh, Paul Herbert was very interested in LSD and he was part of a group from Big Sur that would conduct experiments to learn more about the effects of LSD. And at the time this was all going on, he did have in his possession six sugar cubes of LSD, but he did not bring them to Eureka, he did not give them to Thomas Meehan, and he did not even speak to Thomas Meehan about LSD. And for some reason, the wife was accusing Paul of putting the LSD in Meehan's cider. I don't even know, it didn't say how she knew he drank cider or why she thought uh, Paul put it in the cider, but that's what she thought. And she was suing the hospital because she thought the hospital should have held Thomas there because he was a danger to himself. But I, I don't really blame the hospital myself because Meehan just ran away before anyone could do anything for him. So, I mean, that would be a good explanation of what was going on with Meehan. He was on LSD having a bad trip um, and just out of his mind. Except that in 1968, um, everyone was cleared of all charges and it was determined that LSD played no part in Meehan's behavior. So that just leaves us with a mystery that which to this day has still not been solved. Uh, there's no explanation for how Thomas Meehan could be in the river and back in a motel at the same time and why his footprints just abruptly stopped. So that's an interesting little story and if you haven't seen Carnival of Souls I definitely recommend you check it out. It's a very atmospheric, cool little movie. Truth as strange as fiction. Thanks for watching. <laughs>